So on the A4 uh, landscape format, you you see margins in pink. They are just there to warn you not to put uh, anything important uh, too close to the edge of the page, of course. But uh, of course, they do not print, they do not output. We will go now on the internet and uh, grab some pictures. Okay, we will ask to have only um, pictures with 4 megapixels. So you go in sizes over 4 megapixels. Okay, we only have now pictures with at least 4 megapixels, 4 million pixels in it. Okay. So you will um, control click uh, on uh, one picture. Okay, in that uh, new window, you, you, go, you go in that new window and you ask to display the image. And normally you have the image displayed in full definition. You click, it zooms. You see all the pixels <laughs> are uh, there. If it doesn't work, you go back and choose another picture. We will not uh, worry about uh, this now. Maybe uh, sometimes it, um, it brings you to a website uh, directly. Don't, don't um, use that picture. Then uh, go back uh, in the first window and control click on another picture until when you click uh, display picture, it uh, displays the full, uh, um, the full definition picture, OK? So of course you will uh, send it to the to the computer, to the hard drive. Right click and send it in a f in a, in a folder, maybe on the desktop. I, know, I don't know. Maybe you have a, a hard drive which is called data. I save the picture in the folder. So I'll go in InDesign. So file open is not the way to open a picture at all. If you want to import a picture in uh, an InDesign document, you have to use file place. OK, you go in file place. You find the folder you just made a few minutes ago. And in it, you have the JPEG picture. So once you're in the place uh, window and you have chosen which picture you place, you click open. Place the cursor on the uh, top left of the document and you click. And the picture comes with its dimensions. Maybe you have a very large picture, which is much bigger than the A4 format we are using. So the, the dimensions of the picture is written inside of the file of the picture, in the metadata part of the file. It's, it's not good. You don't have to, to use this metadata with the dimensions written in the, in the file. So we'll uh, cancel the place. So you. Control Z, and the pictures go go back in the cursor. The best way to import pictures in InDesign is to choose the size you, you want while you're placing it on the document. Instead of clicking, you may uh, drag and drop and choose the size of the picture. So make it, make it uh, about that size, more or less. OK, so we, we override it, the dimensions uh, which, which are written in the file. We won't use it. We don't care about uh, the dimensions. The, defi the definition of the picture is the same. Uh, I if I made it small or, or wide on the page, the definition is the same. But the dimension in metrics is not the same. Uh, I choose to place it that size. OK, we'll, re um, we'll save the document. The, the hint design document, file save, save it in the same folder as the picture, and uh, I will uh, name it first doc, and I'll write uh, a version number at the end of the name. 
Okay. We will uh, resize uh, the picture and uh, don't, don't do anything uh, unless uh, we say so because it's a little bit complicated unless you already know in design. Here we have two things, the container and the content at the same place. Of course, the content is in the container. You see the color of the, um, the vectors here. They are blue, which means we are working on the container, not the content. You will use the black arrow and double click on the picture or simply click on the uh, circle. And normally you will see the vectors are no longer blue, they are brown, which means you are working now in, in the content level, you're not on the container level, you're in, inside, uh, working inside the, the container, you're in the content level, the picture. If you click outside, it deselects everything. Just clicking once on the container, it appears uh, once again blue. So it's the container, you're working on the container. Double clicking, you're in the content. Okay, it's brown. Go to the free transform tool and you will increase the size. Uh, you will be using the lower right uh, handle and resize the picture. Okay, so you see what happens. You only see a part of the picture through the container, but also the proportion has changed. You can solve it. Control Z. So I take the lower right handle. I'm using the shift key, not caps lock. I'm, I'm talking about the shift key. I release the mouse button and then, only then, I release the shift key. It constrains the proportion. You do the same for the other handle, top left, with the shift key. Okay. Okay, you may zoom out if you wish. So, what we did here is crop the picture. You always have to crop the pictures. Of course, it is, it is part of the creative process. You only show a part of the picture. We will go out of the content edit mode by clicking with the black arrow just beside, so nothing is selected. Uh, I click. ah. Your question, you clicked outside the box, but you have to, to see that the, the, the border of, of the pictures is far from the container. You, you really have to click outside. It is pixelated. What happened? Because if I go back in the browser, the picture is... It's good. A lot of pixels, okay. But here, in InDesign, it's not good. When you are working on an InDesign document, in order to save uh, computer resources, InDesign shows the pictures in lower definition. When you output a, a PDF or anything, you will find in the PDF the high definition picture. Okay, so here we have a, one document with only one picture. That's not a problem to ask in design to display the picture in high definition. That's what we'll do. But remember, if you are working on large documents, lots of pages, a lot of high definition pictures with a small computer, you better not do what we will do here. Ask in design to display in high definition. Okay, we will go in view, display performance, and instead of typical display, you will ask for high quality display. And the pictures are normally displayed in high definition. Sometimes it doesn't work, it depends. But anyway, at, in the output, it is the high definition picture that will be used. I will not explain here why, why, why sometimes it doesn't work. So we continue to try things on this picture. With the black arrow, you select now the container. Not the content, you don't uh, double click on the picture, you don't click on the circle <laughs> in the center. 
you just click on the container, the vectors are blue, we are working on the container, not the content, and now you go on the free transform tool and you do the same as a while ago, the right bottom handle with the shift key, I release the button of the mouse, then I release the shift key, and you see what happened? Both have been increased in size, both the container and the content. Okay, see something strange here? Sometimes when I increase the size, I see the picture increasing while I'm moving the handle, sometimes not. You see, this way I see the picture increase in size, slowly, and sometimes not. In InDesign, if you want to see the things in real time, the pictures increased in size in real time, you have to click on the handle, wait half a second before moving it, and you see the picture moving in real time. That's not really important, but sometimes it's useful. Rotate it, uh, increase the size, decrease the size, and seeing in real time. Uh, letting InDesign uh, make a preview, half a second, you click on the handle, um, half a second, and you move the handle. Okay, you see in real time the modification. Last thing to say about uh, manipulating the pictures in InDesign. Black arrow, and you move any handle, and you see that it only acts on uh, the, the size of the container. The picture inside is not uh, resized. This is cropping, not resizing. Okay, of course, if you move it too far, you have a transparent space in the container. That's not useful, don't do that. Okay, we'll make now a text container just beside the picture on the right here. In order to make a text container, you may use the text tool or any other of these tools. The container, which is normally made to, to put pictures in it, or this one, which, which, is, which is more neutral, but you may use any of these one. As far as there is nothing in the box, it may be converted to text box. I make the text container with the text tool, so um, <coughs> you choose the, the type tool there, and you will make a drag and drop on the right side of the document. Don't care about the margins, we're just testing here. The blinking cursor is on the top left. We'll use um, real text, we will go on Wikipedia, grab some uh, real English text. So you go in the browser, to select uh, two par paragraphs, Control C, and then you go in InDesign and you Control V. Just click with the black arrow outside of the box, so it is no longer selected. With the spacebar, you have the shortcut for the end, and you may move the document inside the window. But what happens if we are uh, working in the text with the type tool? Let's try. The type tool, I put the cursor in the text, the blinking cursor, and then when I use the space bar, of course, it adds spaces. Not good. Ctrl Z. When you're working in the text, you have to use another shortcut. Use the Alt key, and then you have the hand. Only when you are working in the text. This is a very useful tip for working fast in InDesign. What happens if I select the text and resize it? With the black arrow, you select the text container. Free uh, transform tool, like that. It is uh, squashed. Not good at all. Okay, Control Z. If you want to resize the container and not squashing the text, you have to use the black arrow only. So I'm moving the middle low handle to resize the box. 
and uh, at one time uh, some texts are not uh, visible anymore and you have uh, a red cross which tells you that there is some text outside the box not a problem for now so that's the the way to resize a, a text container with the black arrow but later we'll see that uh, resizing a text with the free transform is also interesting that you have to use the shift key then in order to not um, change the proportion.